and dramatic blend of pigment and pixels is taking place in Burnaby. Stephen Arthur, a self-taught animator, is applying established computer animation techniques like warping and morphing to give new life to existing artworks. His first short film, Touched Alive, is a remarkable work and was inspired by the paintings of renowned Canadian artist Jack Shadbolt. I started looking at, at artists' work as a way of thinking of how to develop my own style of animating uh, sort of art abstract animation and that's when I saw some of the 
exhibition catalogs that the Boshi Gallery had, and I, it just struck me. I had so much of an affinity for for the paintings, partly because of the organic nature of them. There was one piece I just sort of redrew it and painted it in and tried animating it as an exercise, essentially, in doing my own kind of things that way. Um, and I sent it to him on videotape, and and uh, he wrote back saying, you know, very. Um, very warm, generous response, saying and encouraging me, well, why don't you do a whole bunch more of, of this? And I was immediately interested because he, he came up with a terrific now and in black and white, and I thought it was tremendously interesting in the way he was doing it. So I said, go ahead, you know, this is a fine start. For developing the storyboard, I uh, mostly, I, I first of all just read a lot of Shadbolt's writings um, describing his his thematic concerns and his formal concerns and, and so on. And then I, I just looked through a whole range of pictures. Um, I photographed some of them out of the books or I Xeroxed them and then placed them on until I had kind of intuited a, um, a, a sequence there that, that both um, used the, f the relationship between the forms and also uh, showed the, the um, some of his concerns like the sort of cycles of nature and, and uh, contrast between forces of, of uh, constriction and truncation versus the flux of life, that kind of thing, trying to work that all together to illustrate, you know, what Shadwell might do if he was an animator. It's a very unique work, I think, in structure. And in fact, I would say that uh, it's a totally original work and that uh, it could have great consequences as an influence and a way of treating art uh, that gets inside the thing, inside the structure, the way I was, as though I were painting it myself. So here's one, one little segment from the film where I had to reconstruct the backgrounds after I've cut out one of these pieces to make it move. First of all, I'd have to cut out the piece, pixel by pixel, cutting out this, this object. And then what I would have left would be a big hole. So here's an example of what I had to work with. I had, I had to cut out these pieces in order to animate them separately. And then the original picture only went up this far. So I have now, I uh, have to reconstruct the top part and whatever is in the back there. The next shot that it cuts to is here, where the, the butterfly is coming in here. I used pieces of other paintings and, and sort of painted with it myself. Like here, I'm, I'm lassoing a, a piece of this sky. Could come in here, and this is where it was pasted in here. You can see where it was there. So I can start piecing things together by putting, by putting, um, pieces of this sky together and then I can um, start working with with it like I was painting with it pulling it around to try and make it look like some kind of reasonable painting that Jack Shadow might do another um, uh, thing that you can do that was used a lot in this is um, scraping from one thing to another. Like if I save this kind of like it's behind it and then I can scrape through to what was there and kind of play around with it in a way that's like Jack Shadbolt repainting over things and so on. Composition being so important to a painting and um, doing it to somebody else's work, too, made me really uh, nervous about what I, um, the liberties I was taking with it, so to speak. Well, it's a recreation of the process. I look at my work and I see, my God, that's how it works and how it could be taken and disintegrated and moved. And that's the way I work. Uh, I may say that, <coughs> that every artist's form is not particularly uh, susceptible to this kind of dissection. It just happens that mine has that kind of process in it, and thereby it was one that he could fasten on to.
So I feel like my possible contribution as an artist is to is to translate an image, an, an artistic image, into an equivalent movement. Like Shadbolt's paintings have so much of a time element in them, you can see them almost, they're so dynamic, you can almost see how they would be moving. And that's, that's one of the geniuses of, of, of what he does, is, is to give that sense of movement in a static thing. So in a way, it doesn't even need to be done. <laughs> Good for him, I'd say.